Uh, really glad to meet you here in the company as a main you know, CEO of Bean Project. Uh, can you give me some, give us some little bit about, about your background, background of the Bean Project? What is it about? Sure. So. Thanks for having me. I'm really glad to be here. It's my first time in uh, Seoul. Uh, really great event. So some background about Beam. So Beam is a new project, a new confidential cryptocurrency based on the Mimble Mimble protocol. The project started in Israel uh, about one year ago. Uh, we started development uh, from scratch. Beam is a totally new code base written all in C++. And in just nine months, we were able to build the full protocol and we launched on January 3. So Beam is um, a proof of work, decentralized, permissionless cryptocurrency based on a Mimblewimble protocol that gives great privacy features. So that's what Beam is. Well, I heard that Mimblewimble protocol is really hot these days now since uh, the two main projects based on uh, Mimblewimble has launched. Can you give us some more details about what is about? Yeah, so the original Bitcoin architecture provided a distributed currency that can work with without any centralized body and permissionless proof of work, secure and everything. Now, this distributed ledger that anyone can validate came with a price of full transparency and full absence of privacy. So whatever is going on on Bitcoin and most other uh, cryptocurrencies can be observed by anyone, meaning that there is no financial confidentiality at all. Right. So uh, people understood that it's a problem and developed some protocols based on top of Bitcoin, uh, original architecture that allowed for some privacy and the most notable protocols being Zcash and Monero's. Uh, the price they had to pay was scalability because they had to use the same Bitcoin architecture and hide transactions, uh, amounts, senders and receivers with some very smart uh, methods. Now the Mimblewimble protocol that was published uh, about two and a half years ago by an anonymous person, that protocol actually took the Bitcoin architecture upside down. And while in Bitcoin, uh, everybody has an address, and in most of the cryptocurrencies today, a person has an address that's associated to them. In Mimblewimble, there is no such thing. A person actually only has a set of keys that look totally unrelated to each other. And each one of those keys can unlock a UTXO, an unspent transaction output, which can be presented as a safe deposit box. Okay, so when a transaction happens on Mimblewimble, two people have to start conversation, start a conversation, and one person takes uh, their safe deposit box, and uh, one person takes their safe deposit box, uh, divides it into two, one for the change and one for the recipient, and, and then the transaction is signed by both sides. And then the blockchain can validate without knowing who the sender or the receiver and what the amount is, the blockchain validates that no new money was printed in this transaction. So whatever was in the inputs is also in the outputs the same amount. So no money was printed and if it's true then the transaction is valid. So in addition to that, Mimblewimble, and, and because of that actually, because, because the blockchain is just the current state of all those safe deposit boxes, there is no need to store the history. You just need to store a very short proof that you reach this history in a valid way. So, and that's why Mimblewimble's uh, implementation of Mimblewimble protocols al allows for a smaller blockchain than Bitcoin. Uh, so, the size, of blockchain is really more than the, the, the size of the blockchain is way smaller than Bitcoin's, five to ten times smaller, uh, because it grows not with a number of transactions, but with a number of UTXOs, which doesn't actually even have to grow. It, uh, we're still studying the behavior of the number of UTXOs, but it's not linearly growing with the number of transactions. So, so this protocol combines confidentiality and scalability together for the first time. Um, and that's why it's uh, so exciting and so great. But so, well, to me, what's the privacy for you? I mean, what is the term? What is the value of privacy for you? So the value of privacy um, is actually having control over your information, right? Uh, we even call 
privacy part of your sovereignty. So to have a full sovereignty, you need to be able to control what you own, but also to control the information about what you own. So uh, Bitcoin gave a way to control what you own, but not to control the information. Uh, now what we want to build is a cryptocurrency and actually a platform, not just for our currency, but for other kinds of value, where people can have full control over the assets, full control and full control over the information. And by full control over the information, I mean not just being able to hide it altogether, but also being able to selectively disclose it when you need and, if, and when you want to. And, and that's actually the, the, the vision of being is to create a cryptocurrency where people can trade fully confidentially, but can also provide information to compliance bodies uh, to, make, uh, to make their funds acceptable in the larger financial ecosystem. So as I know, the reason why a term, I mean, some privacy protocols such as confidential, confidential uh, transaction and all the other uh, privacy protocol has came out is that because um, we first think about Bitcoin as an anonymous protocol, and then we got to know about that it's not only fully anonymous, it's like more like it's anonymous than anonymous. Can you uh, give us some more information about the differences about these two terms? Okay, so um, an anonymous protocol is where you shouldn't be able to see anything, any identities of the senders, receivers, amounts, anything. Uh, now, Bitcoin in the beginning was thought to be anonymous, although it wasn't. It was actually, as you said, pseudonymous, meaning that each uh, person or each wallet has an address. Right, so it's like a pseudonym, it's like a, a fake name. But the problem is that when I send you some money once, or you send me some money once, I know that this account is associated with you. So your pseudonym is, is not a pseudonym anymore, it's your actual name, right? And then using a lot of big data analysis techniques, you can actually discover a lot of identities, a lot of transaction patterns and, and all the details of what every player or every wallet or every person is actually doing. You can, using big data analysis you can understand that the, there is one person behind several wallets because of the patterns of their working or where they're connected to. So, so eventually Bitcoin is not even pseudonymous anymore. So it's just all transparent and public. So in case of privacy, there are lots of privacy uh, tokens or cryptocurrencies, as you just mentioned about, uh, you know, Gcash or Narrow or even Green or Bean. I would say those uh, confidential cryptocurrencies, they are kind of against the government or the central middleman exchanges. So even some of the large exchanges in the world are even delisting those uh, privacy tokens. Yeah, so, so actually right now I think the only government that uh, does not allow trading of confidential assets is uh, the Japanese government. Um, and the reason for that was that during one of the exchange hacks some of the privacy coins were stolen and it was impossible to trace them. So, so, so the reason for the ban was not even that the government didn't like the privacy coins in general, but they, they were kind of overreacting to this security hack, right? But, but in general, uh, governments want to have certain control and, and uh, they probably will not like privacy coins that much. Now, the technology is there. It's impossible to forbid it. It's impossible to stop it. Uh, but what, what a, a thoughtful government should do is to see how it can work together with those privacy coins. And this is where Beam comes in with the selective disclosure because we want to enable people to use uh, crypt cryptocurrency in a confidential way but still be able to comply. Okay, so I think that is the way, that is the way the governments will eventually take. So protocols like ours that allow optional compliance will be accepted by the financial system. Protocols, they don't do that, uh, 
will still have a right to exist and will exist, but they will be more of a niche situation for people who don't want to ever get to the larger financial ecosystem, to the fiat ecosystem. So, in the case of Bloomberg, what uh, some of your solution to deal with those kind of uh, large exchanges and even governments? In the, on behalf of the consumption, rather a feature of privacy. Yeah, so, so right now the, the exchanges are ready to work with us. We're listing multiple exchanges, we're talking to more exchanges, so it's not an issue. Uh, in the future, it will be a bigger issue for exchanges than the governments, and, and again, that's where our opt in compliance comes in. So, users, people who will want to be part of the fiat system will provide this compliance information that will be required but this will still be confidential so it will not be seen by everyone on the blockchain just by some designated parties so that that's our view and that's how we combine the privacy layer with with compliance so what would be some main positioning or goal of big projects in the whole cryptocurrency industry so so I would say the positioning is to create a bridge between the privacy layer and the compliance layer and to be able to uh, to solve this problem of how we do both confidentiality and compliance inside one ecosystem, one platform. And some people are, like argue with you, I mean, some of those like, Bitcoin maximalists who are really against a huge, large uh, fund of rewards might argue with uh, this kind of like, consensus or govern governance that in getting some, uh, some of those portions from the mining rewards. Uh, What's your comment? Can you give us Oh, so, so you're talking about our fund, our treasury model, our funding model as a project. So we believe that uh, the startup model, the funded startup, is the best way to do innovations, right? And we see that all across the board, you know, thousands of great startups that, you know, from Google to, to Beam to any others, you know, you need funding, right? So the, the right model and the fair model that we found for us was to build this treasury. Uh, it's, it's uh, by the way, inspired by what Zcash did as well, another privacy project. So, and the idea is that we raise some VC funds. We didn't do any ICOs. I personally don't believe in offering uh, investment to the crowd because people don't have a way to to evaluate it really well. So we we collected funds from VCs who understand the risk, who did a lot of due diligence and they will be repaid in those tokens over five years and the same as the core team and the Beam Foundation so everybody's interest is aligned it's all very public and very transparent so I think uh, and this is what enables us to really do very fast and high quality innovation we built a great team and uh, it's uh, supported by those funds from the uh, because of the origin of uh, this kind of consensus arguments and this those kind of uh, protocol are kind of you know, really hard to get into the high TPS in, in scaling in aspect of TPS. So are you just aware of any other implementation layer to solution or any other scaling? Yeah. So, so proof of work is really slow. It is slow, but it is the only consensus mechanism that has been proven to work so far. So, uh, for the time being, we plan to stay with proof of work. For the time being, we plan to stay with proof of work. Although we're looking at the space, and if there is a better uh, consensus mechanism that is, you know, solid, then we might consider switching. Uh, but anyway, we're looking at second layer solutions, so we did some work with Lightning. Uh, it still has a lot of issues, Lightning in general, but uh, we will be probably doing more, we'll be doing some proof of concept of how Beam can be integrated with Lightning, it is possible. Uh, we're also thinking in the direction of federated sidechains for faster transactions per second. So again, right now our network supports the, the required number of transactions very well. We have around 17 per second right now uh, that we can support. So it's pretty significant, of course, not close to uh, Visa and MasterCard, but you know, Beam is still not there. So, so second layer solutions will provide for that. So, is there any possibility or expectation 
options for Mimogun to implement it in Bitcoin or like many other proof of work existing Well, uh, we have announced a cooperation with Litecoin that is interested to implement Mimblewimble as extension blocks. So we'll see what happens there. With Bitcoin, I think there there is some discussion, but um, I think it is very it will be very hard, both technically and politically, to reach a consensus and really implement that. Uh, and there are a lot of forces at play, specifically in Bitcoin. Uh, so I'm not even sure that technologically it is really possible. And even if it is, then probably will be like sort of a side chain, uh, which is again not the ideal solution because the basic layer will still be transparent. Um, I'm. I don't know. I, I haven't read this statement exactly. Uh, but I can tell you about the limitations that we know about. So one one of the limitations is that you have to have both wallets online to create a transaction, which poses a certain inconvenience, right? So I cannot just get your address and send you money while you're away. You need to be online, not in the same moment, but you know, in the period of two hours. That's how we built the system. Now. Uh, we are now working on what we call one-sided payments, which will actually mitigate this and allow people to create some sort of a recipient UTXO set where you, you would be able to publish that and then other people will be able just to send you money to that without your participation. The price would be somewhat decreased privacy because people will be able to see that it will, and it will be possible to understand how many times a transaction was sent to this UTXO set, which uh, you know, w which which is not 100% uh, privacy. So people will need to choose if they want to use this feature. Uh, is there any other things that you'd like to mention or comment to the Korean audience? So as I said in the beginning, it's my first time in Korea. Um, so far, I really like uh, the people and, 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 and the country. Uh, I know Korea is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, cryptocurrency market in the world. So we're working hard to set up partnerships here uh, to get onto trading floors, into exchanges, uh, address the developer community, and we'll be doing more in Korea in the coming weeks and months. So thank you very much. Four hundred and ten dollars. There are the four bids. The actual retail price is four hundred.